The Hollowtide spirit is still around in Deep Boken, and its festivities continue to be celebrated. Of course, scaring innocent people will be rewarded with limited time cosmetics, so go do that. But there's something else I want to talk about that's really interesting and pretty impactful for Deep Boken. Let's head on up to the mysterious floating keep. Before we start, go check out my Twitter and stay updated with all my new content. I always do some sneak peeks on upcoming videos, so if you want to check it out, the link's down below. I've also been working on some interesting race concepts, so keep an eye out for that. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe. In Deep Oaken, there's something right above our heads that's been teased since the game's release. Various statues all across the Etrian Luminant hint to a floating island that looks down upon the conflict below. And now, it's finally decided to show itself. With a glorious flash of light and a lot of screen shake, the spooky floating keep appears in the Etrian Luminant. Take a look at this spectacle. We really need more cinematics. To be honest, I heard the Halloween update was going to be small, but I think they really outdid themselves with this amazing cutscene. Anyway, let's go up and face the secrets in the sky. Right off the bat, we get a message informing us of the true owners of this elusive island. The Spellheart family of Lightborns reigns supreme up in the sky. Ever since Deep Oaken's public release, Lightborns have never been spotted in the official lore of the game. Of course, there have been players who represent Lightborn characters, but there was never a Lightborn NPC before this event. I'd say it's pretty impactful for Deep Oaken, and it's a shame they'll be gone before we know it. On further inspection, it seems like all floating keep inhabitants are lightborn. Well, except for one. There's a funny looking skeleton called a bone rattler that lives on the keep outskirts. Anyway, these lightborns are all from the same family, but they do have some interesting differences. This race can have halos above their head, around their neck, or around their wrists. There's no official lore explaining what these halos represent, but it's commonly thought they separate rank. People think that head halos belong to the elite, neck halos are for workers, and wrists are for warriors. It's unofficial, but I'll go with this lore. Up in the sky, we only meet lightborn with neck or wrist halos and they all serve different purposes. Everest near the entrance helps us head home, Leaf on the inside buys our goodies, Rom over here, you know that's what I'm gonna call him, sells some exclusive sky food, and there's some other ones that act as a merchant and blacksmith. There's also two more NPCs I want to focus on. The main lightborn, Lysander Spellheart, chills in the keep atrium and manages the entire Holotide event. Talk to him for everything related to Halloween. But the most interesting lightborn to me in the keep sits outside. Alina, a younger lightborn, sits in the graveyard questioning Holotide festivities. Her dialogue isn't really crazy, but her appearance could allude to something greater. Every single Lightborn we've seen so far sports a single set of halos while she has two, a set around her neck and a set on her wrists. This lore isn't official, it's just what I think, but hear me out. Maybe she doesn't know what she wants to be. She's still deciding if she wants to be a warrior or a worker, and that's why she has two halos. This could totally be a bug, but where's the fun in that? It's up for interpretation. Let's take a look at the architecture. The floating keep is pretty damn cool and rich with interesting designs. I think its original purpose was for something a little bit different, but they spice it up with some Halloween skulls, pumpkins, and cobwebs. Outside the Keep's gate, there's various ores to mine, which might be the reason behind their wealth. On the inside, there's even some training tools and a blacksmith with some more weapons. So far, I haven't seen anybody that sells dark steel greatswords and tridents before, but head to the sky if you're missing one. On the upper floor, there's some rooms and even a room for alchemy. I think it's funny, but maybe in the past, the apothecary had a few spellheart scientists. And the last spot I want to focus on is the Dispute Hall. Normal people probably just argue or debate, but the royalty up above have a room for disputes, you know? Maybe Maybe you can have some duels or packing sessions up there. And I really enjoyed this update. I think these are most of the secrets of the mysterious floating keep and I might have missed a few things but I think I highlighted some of the info on the elusive lightborns and their castle up above. Anyway, let me know your opinion down below on the floating keep and look out for the next video. Thank you guys for watching and make sure to like and subscribe. Have a good one!